Hey guys, I'm LT Wright, a knife maker owner of LT Wright Knives. I've been blessed to be making knives since um, early 2000s. My instructor and mentor is R.W. Wilson of R.W. Wilson Knives. Uh, his claim to fame is he made the tomahawks for the movie Jeremiah Johnson back in the 70s. Ran into him at a gun show and was kind of talking to him about his tomahawks and knives and said, man, it'd be really cool to learn how to make them. He offered to teach me, so I have to say I took the ball and ran with it because Man, you, you can't pass up an opportunity to, to do something like that. Found out he lived about 10 minutes from me, so that all worked out really, really well for me. And then uh, ever since I've been making knives, went full time in 2005 making knives, and I've been making knives ever since. Uh, bushcraft was an interesting thing because as when I started, I was a hunter. You know, grew up hunting and, and used buck knives a lot. That's what my father used, so naturally you kind of use what your dad uses. I, I started as a, a hunting knife company, and a friend of mine, Tim Stetcher invited me to some bushcraft stuff. At the time, man, back in those days, I, you know, heck, didn't even know what bushcraft was. Barely could spell it, you know? And then it's like, hey, what's this bushcraft stuff? So we went out, uh, we went out on a couple outings, started really getting into it, found out what a bushcraft knife was used for, you know, and kind of started looking into the possibility of making knives in that genre and uh, ever since. And now we're, we're basically known as a bushcraft knife company. And, and we're very blessed to be, be doing that and, and our knives being well received around the world. Over the years, I've done some survival courses and did some camping. Um, right now, like vehicle-based camping a lot too, so we, we do a lot of that stuff. And our knives are used more in a kitchen base. But as far as a bushcraft knife, generally making your, your tent stakes are one of the, the biggest things, you know. Getting out there making some tent stakes, some pot hooks, uh, making your kindlin, but, you know, light batoning, feather sticking making different little utensils, sitting around at the campfire at night carving a spoon. One of the funnest things when you're bushcrafting, nice, nice warm fire, little spoon carving action, that kind of stuff, having fun. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we do in our knives it really is based on feedback from people that we have built knives for or people who have come to us and talked to us about our knives and say, hey, your knife does a really good job at this and if you did this to it, maybe it would be increased. The sharpened spine came out of emails and interaction with people at places saying, hey man, it would be really cool if the back of the knife could strike a fire steel or a ferro rod. We're like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So we started squaring off the spines of our knives, which now is one of our, the features on all of our bushcraft knives. The thumb scallops came about very much in the same aspect. We don't put them on all bush knives because it's, it's just like anything else. Some people don't like them, some people love them. You know, it's, it's one of those things. So you'll find them on our Genesis knife in particular, and that was out of being requested to have a, um, I guess, a pinch point on a knife. I don't know that the center line is a must have, the center line point, but it is something that makes things, you know, when you're, you're doing bow drill divots or, or some things like that, it does help. So the point being in the center of the knife, one of the things, you know, you grab onto it, you work on little splinter stuff, bow drill divots, uh, it's just it's just a nice feature on a knife. A Scandi knife with a center point. This is one of my uh, particular favorite designs, and a, you know personal preference over that is having that center line point on there. When we first started making knives, I was a hollow grinder. That's the way I learned how to grind knives. So, and again, we were doing a lot of hunting knives, and a hollow grind is a great game prepping style knife. As I got introduced to bushcraft and started doing a lot more stuff that having fun, we found that the Scandi grind was one of those grinds that were. Um, very prevalent in, in bushcraft. And the Scandi grind basically being a V-ground knife, uh, short, shallow, we do about a 12 and a half, you know, 11 and a half to 12 degrees through here. Uh, we also do, we do grind it to zero and then we do a micro buff on our particular knives. We feel it gives a little more toughness. Um, the reason people sometimes ask us, why do we do a micro buff as opposed to just doing a Scandi sharp and be done? When we first started doing Scandies, again, not being super experienced in doing Scandies, you gotta learn somewhere, we were getting a little bit of a microchip on this edge, and we found if we did a hard buff, which is just barely micro buffing that, it really toughened up the edge of that knife for us, and we we're getting better results in the, in the um, bushcraft industry with that. So Scandi grinds are very, very popular and have been for a long time in the bushcraft, uh, because it's, it's like a wood chisel. And those of you that have, have worked wood in the, in the past know that, man, you put a wood chisel on a piece of wood and it just strips it. So making feather sticks or fur sticks or anything like that, boy, you can really just use this thing. Uh, it works fantastic for that long, quick carving. 
So bushcraft naturally is, is the Scandi grind is very, very popular. Um, there's different types. You have Scandi Vex. What we do is a full V grind with a micro buff on our Scandies. But another grind that's quite popular with bushcraft is the Sabre grind. Sabre grind, very much similar to a flat grind. So now what you have is you have a Sabre grind, a higher primary grind with a secondary sharpened edge. And on all our knives, we do a convex secondary edge. And a convex is, is basically what it's doing, is, is making what we feel is the edge tougher. A saber grind over a flat grind, what it does is it's giving you a little more of this spine left at the top of the blade, as opposed to being ground clear to the top and doing what is called the, you know, the distal taper to the point. So you're staying thick all the way out to here where the saber grind meets up, and then from there down, very similar to a Scandi is where it, it tapers to the end. Um, so a saber grind right now, I can tell you uh, very trending in, in the bushcraft thing is uh, the sabers are coming on very strong as opposed to the Scandies. Can't really give you a reason why. They're both great. I think um, a lot of it can be a personal preference thing. I know that guys love Scandies. There are some guys that hate Scandies. Same thing with sabers. So it's, it's definitely going to fall into a personal preference, but they're, I think they're both viable especially if we're talking about bushcraft specific. Boy, they're both viable in that task. Our bushcraft knives, at least our Genesis, are full tang construction, which means the steel is running all the way through the, the handle, and then the handles are attached to that. So a full tang construction uh, versus a stick tang. A stick tang will have the handle go all around here and then possibly have a full or partial stick tang depending on the style of knife that comes partially back or fully back into the handle to the, the rear part of the handle as well. And some come all the way through and maybe have a butt cap screwed onto them. And it's just the difference in construction. I can't say one is necessarily better than the other. Um, they're, they're both work quite, quite well. Now our Genesis knife is a, basically a Kephart knife in design is, is what it's based on. Uh, surprisingly, I based this design on a knife I had as a kid and it was a herder's catalog knife my dad probably bought for $10. They used to have a big old thumb hump here, if any of you guys are familiar with that. They had wooden handles and the herder's was stamped right in the side. I loved that knife. I played Tarzan, I played Daniel Boone, you name it when I was a kid. And that's where your love of knife starts, is generally what your dad had you kind of gravitate to. Well, that was a, an extremely thin uh, butcher style knife at, at the time, and I think it was um, you know top to bottom ground, convex edge, but I really like the design. I like the way the broomstick style handle felt. So again, hanging around with a lot of bushcrafters early on, noticing what the handles they were gravitating to and, and what they were made of. Um, you know, the Pucos have a very interesting, simple style handle in most cases. The broomstick worked out very well. It tapers slightly from the tail to the front, which just gives you a great purchase on this knife all the way around. There's just enough here to keep your fingers from slipping forward if your hands are really, really cold or wet, um, and it, it gives you a good purchase on the knife overall. And the way that the broom style handle, it just gives you a full purpose grip when you wanna do different grips and you're working your, you know, your different techniques and stuff. When we started in, in the bushcraft, way back in, in the early days, as I like to say, I, I would say thick was it. And, and the reason, everybody was looking for that one tool option. So they, they were, we were building large knives. If you remember the, the PLSK ones we used to build were 3 16 in thickness. They were very, very thick knives and, and they were heavy duty workhorses. And, and they're great knives. Well, over the years, it seems like the people were starting to gravitate to a, a little more nimble knife maybe. So we started making our uh, Genesis in a 1 8 when we started out with the Genesis and we're very very pleased with this thickness it's, it's a great thickness and now I see the trend even going a little bit thinner going into the 3 seconds which again like a lot of the Morin knives out there are 3 seconds and who can say that a Morin knife isn't a great bushcraft knife I'm like goodness we've all had them and we probably still all have a drawer full of them they're great knives so I, I see that right now again as the trend that I was saying earlier I can see that that we're selling more of the the saber grind stuff we're getting into the thinner knives. We're not getting asked for a four inch knife, three sixteenths thick anymore. It's just, a, it's a mindset. And I think maybe what's happening is because bushcraft is getting a little more popular with people, 
you don't ha the beginners have started coming up through the ranks and they're getting more proficient with their knives and as they get more proficient with their knives they're seeing that maybe some of these thinner steel stocks they're more nimble uh, they don't you know not as heavy in your hand and stuff and I, I think their skill sets are rising which is a great thing for bushcraft and as the skill sets rise they're changing their tools over to suit them better again when we started making knives we wanted to make a whole system I wanted to make sure that the sheath and the knife kind of all went together. So what we did is we got with JRE Industries and we talked about what we wanted in a knife sheath as well. Worst thing I could do, and I used to hate to think about this, is you buy a brand new knife, you get the sheath, you hate the sheath, you have to send the knife off, have a custom sheath made or, or something like that. So we wanted, when, a purchase, when you purchase one of our knives, you got one of our good sheaths. So Spin at JRE makes these out of eight, inch, eight ounce double dyed leather. Now what we've done is we added a fire steel loop to all of our bush knives. So you can have your fire steel right there with you. You can use it as a standard hip style or as a drop dangler. I prefer the drop dangler because I'm usually wearing a long coat. This way it's easier to access my knife. And plus when I sit inside my Jeep and stuff, I got a little bit of rock and I don't poke down into the sheath. So it gives you a couple open grommets on the bottom if you want to hang a little extra gear. And it's just an overall cool setup. Now in this particular sheath, I've added a little Kydex tab here in the back for extreme ex retention because you know leather's going to stretch out so I've I made a little push pop point with a piece of kydex Ben and I talked about it and he made me this little thing we put it on there it works fantastic so yes these are a great package all together knife and sheath so guys remember to check out knife center knife center is one of our authorized dealers you can check out the genesis there and a lot of our other knives as well but don't forget not only our stuff but they carry other great bushcraft knives I have a knife collection. I own a lot of other friends of mine knives, so don't just pick one. Get there, spend your money, tell them LT sent you.